Um, so normally I do an artist talk, but uh, in researching this, I decided instead I was going to write you guys a letter. Um, I have some friends who run this place called the School for Co Poetic Computation in New York, and Zach and Taeyoon, like, do this sometimes for talks, and I, I really like the way it came out. So I wrote you guys a letter kind of, like, based off of the ideas of where I'm coming from. Um, if you want to see my work, it's online. <laughs> so... Dear everyone here, I feel like a bit of a hypocrite standing up here. I've spent the last few weeks with anxiety about how I needed to inspire a revolution in a lecture that was 22 minutes or less. About the same time, I got really bad food poisoning while giving a graduate workshop on encryption methodologies and spent most of that week in the bathroom. As soon as I got better, I got sick again, followed by what I thought was Ebola, probably from my son's kindergarten, because he refused to cover his mouth, and that was the week he decided he would use his, booger, his boogers as finger paint on my face. <sighs> I tried to start researching what it was I was going to talk about in a historical context, only for life to interrupt. The dog would need to be walked, the door would, need, the door would ring, and I would need to answer it. I would have to start all over again. As I tried again and I sat at my desk, the dog would bark at the old pizza box, my son would want me to wipe his butt, and another trolling email would come in that hit me harder as usual. That day, I took a Tylenol, I went to bed, and I cried from a mixture of what I guess was a fever exhaustion, and realizing that in order to keep doing this, I would need to grow superpowers if that was the way I was going to survive. This is my life. It's not really where I imagined being at 33 or what I thought 33 would look alike. But then again, I'm not sure what I thought it would be or even if I would still be alive by this age. As a feminist of whatever wave we are now riding, we were told to give it all without any, we were told we were given it all without any real map of how to survive it all. So we make lists, we do laundry, we do the laundry, we stay up late. We work two jobs, sometimes three. We do not say no enough or ask for help, or even to help me. We get up too early, we get not enough sleep, we learn to run in our heels, we swear off heels, we change diapers, and we change worlds. On a good day, it feels like we're swimming against the current, but on a really bad day, it feels like I'm slowly drowning. So somewhere about this time last year, Golan invited me to return to the studio, and I was more or less where I am today at the realization that it's not about equal rights, but how we as women think, how we teach and treat each other. We have to reshape our own perception of how we view ourselves. A good friend once gave me the advice that for every woman that supports and mentors you, support three more women. The struggle at this moment for me is about coming to a new understanding of how things really are. It's not that, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's about getting out of a fantasy, about expectations ingrained by media and seeing the facts. As an artist and a technologist, we have to fight against the preconceived notions and biases that as the Gorilla Girls so aptly stated in the 90s, less than 3% of the artists in the Met are women, but over 85% of the nudes are female we have a long way to go. So flash forward, Michael Brown, an unarmed black teenager, was shot and killed by Darren Wilson, a white police officer. Eric Gardner, an unarmed black man, was killed using an illegal chokehold. It was recorded, it became viral, and the policeman was not indicted. As a reaction now, the police are getting body cams from Lockheed Martin. Trust us, they said, as the head of the police, of the NYPD said. Now Berkeley's getting tear gassed, and as we peacefully protest, our fossil overlapped. And as I watch people party on lavish yachts in Miami, others walk the streets of New York City. And I couldn't help but thinking our system is broken. I know that change is mandatory, and I realized in the last few months of campus camps, campus being having rapes and murders and minority killings that were in a, in a really tough place, that there is no freedom when we have to negotiate the conditions to simply and safely stay alive. Technology has yet to transform democracy, but change is coming. Free thought requires free media. Free media requires open access. 
Women, minorities, and transgendered need to be treated ethically and fairly to have the same privilege to write, listen, and speak, or create. We have the chance to shift the definition of some of the words which were once so concrete in the foundation of our society, trust, freedom, equality, and justice. So this week starts on a really challenging note for me. All of the pieces are there, moving around in what sometimes feels like chaos. And we have to form these new models and challenge traditional versions of representation, even if they are just our own preconceived notions. And as I stand here, it is now almost 2015, in a few weeks. I am still 33, I think, <laughs> and still very much navigating and failing and falling and trying to find a tipping point or the tipping points and realizing the answers will be in art, code, poetry, justice, and sometimes magic. So that's me in a nutshell. If you're interested in seeing my work, you can go to my website. If you have any questions, please email me or tweet at me. Um, and I'll pass this, the baton now to the next lady. Thank you.